The new boss of the ADP Bank, Dr. Kofi Mensah, would uh, today assume office as the new boss of the bank. He's taking over from Daniel Esiedu, who stepped down last Thursday, following government's decision to nominate a new managing director for the listed bank. There's more in this report. For some, Dr. Mensah's job is cut out for him. That is how to consolidate gains chalked by the previous administration in terms of improved financials and moving the bank from a state-controlled to a listed financial institution at the Ghana Stock Exchange. Also, another hurdle is investor confidence. That is, he is the right man for the job, especially when he was nominated by government, which has minority interest in the bank, and that he is not going to be doing the bidding of the current administration. And finally, how to rally the workers behind him and give the assurance that he is the right man for the job. Well, for some, even though he is not a president of a country, his first 100 days in office could show some signs whether he can overcome these challenges. All right, so the president is also expected to appoint a new first deputy governor of the Bank of Ghana in the coming days and will shortly be joined in the studio by George Raffi, who will give us details as to which kind of person occupies that, this particular position. But before then, the Institute of Energy Security, IES, says a relatively stable local currency, a stable crude oil price on the international market, a low fuel stock, and a continuous rise in the price of gasoline and gas oil on the global market it foresees fuel prices at the pump to rise up marginally. IES says it is still monitoring the implementation of the National Petroleum Authority's reviewed standard of fuel scheduled to begin today, August 1, 2017, from the initially proposed July 1, 2017. Crude oil prices have been fairly stable as we speak. Um, a barrel is around $49, so it didn't have any impact. It's not so different from what happened in the previous window. The CD has also been relatively stable as we speak, with an average of four CDs, 38 pesos as well. You also take into consideration the stock level that we have. Um, gasoline levels we know are on the low, but we have enough diesel and um, we're also expecting um, vessels to discharge very soon, so we'll be okay with that. For finished products, for um, the plat benchmark that we use, um, we know that the gasoline went up by about 2%, gas oil also went up by about 3 3%. So we're expecting that it's going to have an impact on pricing in this very window. So at the end of the day, what, what would be the impact? Is it going to be negative? Is it going to be positive? Is it going to, are the prices going to go up? Are they going to decline? No, we're expecting prices to go up by about 2.5%, especially when MPA has also revised the standards that we have. We all know that we're doing 3,000 ppm. Um, from 1st of August, that's today, we are going to be doing um, 50 ppm. Um, it was supposed to start. We're told that is going, it's not going to have any effect on pricing. No, it's not. It's not possible. Anybody who says that is not possible. What it is is that perhaps the market is going to um, absorb the cost. But definitely, because when you look at the plat benchmark, the benchmark that we we're using to set prices was thousand ppm. As of now, we are coming to fifty ppm. They are not the same. They are two different. Like when you go to a filling station and you want V power, which is around ninety five, it's not the same price as the other one. So prices are going to shoot up a bit. It's not going to be the same unless, least, of course. At least what are we looking at? 2.5% at most. That's what we are looking Across at. Across all, I mean, I mean... Yes, for gasoline, yes, for gasoline and, um, um, and gas oil as well. Let's still stay further uh, in the downstream petroleum sector. And a group of operators involved in retailing LPG has staged a protest in Tema against a recent directive by the National Petroleum Authority banning the LPG vending stations from refilling cylinders. Uh, the directive is aimed at curbing accidents arising from gas explosions at these filling stations. Instead, the cylinders would be refilled at gas bottling plants. But the operators are outraged, saying they will be thrown out of business and are appealing to President Okufuado to intervene. We have been unjustifiable accused by the MPA authorities of literally setting fire and explosive to the whole country to justify our obnoxious plans and machination, machinations. We want to assure the Ghanaian public that this accusation is a big lie without basis of foundation. 
and at best a rash and smoke screen. We, we are therefore asking the MPA to cite even one instance throughout the over 30 years of the association existence where an explosion have, has occurred in any gas plant while filling cylinders as it alleges. We also want the Ghanaian public to know that throughout the over 30 years existence of the, of the Ghanaian privately LPG plant, there has been only four explosions in Kumasi, Tema, Newtown, Dansoman, and the Accra Newtown. Meanwhile, the MPA accuses us of having set countless fire to the whole country. The recent gas explosion at the factory in Takradi is even being cited as an explosion on a gas plant. Explosion even at the at kitchens have been painted to look as if it happened at the EP, uh, at the at an LPG plant to for install to for install the outbreaks in future. The association has, among other things, put a ban on the filling of LPG tanks at stations via the use of tank trucks engines by September 30th. Let's get back to our earlier story where the president is expected to appoint a new first deputy governor of the central bank in the coming days. This follows the decision by Melissa Na to retire from the bank. So who is the president likely to settle on for this position? George Riaffi, who has been following keenly uh, this particular development, has joined me in the studio. George, welcome. Thank you so much, Riaffi. Now, so who is in contention for this position? Well, right now we're looking about uh, three to four people. Now, top on the list is uh, uh, Mark Solo Opokwafari. He is... Uh, a division chief at the IMF right now. He's been at the IMF for almost uh, eight years. And before moving to the fund, he was the special assistant to Dr. Paul Aqua somewhere around uh, 2006, worked heavily at the Bank of Ghana, and then moved to the IMF uh, to work there. Before that, he was an adjunct uh, lecturer at Regent University uh, here in Ghana. That's the first person. Let's look at the second person here, okay. Dr. Benjamin Amwa. He's the head of research at the Bank of Ghana right now. Before that, he was there. He moved to financial stability. And uh, what is going for Dr. Amwa, or people who are thinking that it could be Dr. Amwa, is the fact that instances where he's a very senior person at the Bank of Ghana, and instances where the governorship position had been vacant. I mean, there were rumors it. that he could be the person that they'll settle on. Now, let's come to Samolo Pata. He's a, a division more of a, a director at the Bank of Ghana, worked at the Treasury Division before moving to financial stability. He's also in contention for this position. But what we are picking up that is, it's likely that the president will settle on Maxwell uh, Pukwa Afari, who is currently at the IMF. He's also been chief mission chief for several countries at the IMF. And it's about his international exposure and the fact that at the Bank of Ghana, he worked closely with Paul Aqua, okay. who championed a lot of reforms at the Bank of Ghana. And also, we could see a gender card being played as well. But hmm. this is what we hear. Deputy, female deputy. Maybe we are likely to get them. But also, don't rule out the Maxwell Pukwafai, who could be uh, the next uh, first deputy governor of the Bank of Now, Bank. I believe you know something about these individuals. Mm -hmm. What actually do they bring? I mean, for, for Maxwell, it's about uh, his international exposure. Now, being a senior economist at the IMF meant that he was also working on just like how for us here we had this uh, Luis Deskin and the other people, he had been chief mission to several countries around the world in terms mm -hmm. of trying to help uh, stabilize the economy as well. Some would say that, well, for a first deputy person, you need a finance person as well to do that. But we understand that Maxwell has some strong uh, grounding in finance as well. So it's more of a blend of finance and economics. And the international exposure might be doing the trick for him as well. Let's come to Dr. Amwa. 
Dr. Amua, a very, very, very experienced person at the Bank of Ghana, of course, and, and therefore that could also be going for him. Now, you look at the, the current governor, uh, Addison, he was from research and he ended up being the, the overall governor. Maybe the research wing might be a very smooth place to fly from there to be a first deputy governor of the Bank of Ghana. Mr. Pata as well, a very, very strong guy as well. Mm. And he's also likely to be settled on as uh, the first deputy governor of the Bank of Ghana. Now, we know very well that the Bank of Ghana hasn't got a board in place yet. Would this uh, affect any of Well, our engagement suggests that that might not be a problem because it's more of an appointment in consultation with the Council of State. Previously, when this announcement was made, we thought that it could take months before the appointment could be made. But again, what we understand that that could even happen in days. Um, as we speak, some names or the name has been submitted to the Council of State for consideration. Okay. And so it could even happen that uh, something could come out today or even something to come out next week as the new uh, first deputy governor of the Bank of Ghana. Yeah, so we're certainly going to see the president uh, appoint. Or nominate his, somebody or, nominate or somebody further approval from all the relevant agencies as mm -hmm. who will be the first deputy governor of the Bank Anybody of Ghana. who comes on board, would he facilitate the IMF, you know, um, deliberations? Well, the Bank of Ghana, it's about the monetary space. And therefore, uh, it's interesting that uh, Mark Solis also appeared to be on top, actually, in terms of being considered. He's had a serious experience with the IMF. But don't forget that those who come out of the IMF to the country, they have a different position as in how things to be done. Dr. Paul Aqua came from the IMF and his approach to the fund it might not be a pro IMF person after all, okay. but also think that things should be done in a different way with respect to managing the economy. So it is not always a, that school of thought that if the person is coming in from the IMF, automatically that person will always be pushing for a yo-yo way of going when it comes to IMF programs. It could be different. And right. this person has been here. He's worked at the Bank of Ghana as well. So, uh, it's, it's not a 100% confirmation okay. that because that person worked at the IMF, automatically he's going to come in and push the agenda of the IMF. All right, that'll be it. But before you go, you were in Parliament yesterday. I mean, how would you assess the performance of the Finance Minister in delivering uh, the mid-year review budget? I mean, some have given it various names. Mm -hmm. How would you assess it? Well, how would I assess it? In terms of presentation, it wasn't bad. Okay. Just that the opener was a little bit of a problem for... Uh, some of the members when he started focusing on uh, historical things, uh, mm. philosophical things. And also don't forget that Ekeno Friata is a very religious person as well. So Always that bit wasn't taken out cow. of his opening uh, when it comes to his presentation. <laughs> but okay. again, as I was trying to explain yesterday, depending on who you engage, the person will tell you that we are on track. And again, if you want to move yourself out of all these discussions and look at it in terms of the figures, you're looking at expenditure, and they have met expenditure. And expenditure is under control. Revenue seems to be the major problem for government. But one will say that the seasonality effect when it comes to revenue has always been a problem in terms of the first quarter of this year. So if you do the extrapolations again, it looks like they will meet all their targets all right. with the exception of revenue. Thank you very much, George, thank for your so time. Thank uh, you so much for, for being here. Yeah. All the names are nice. Uh, thank you. And some are <laughs> saying that, I mean, there are some bunny and there's some pepper budget. It's interesting. <laughs> you should have been in Parliament yesterday. I know, right. I missed it. Okay, thank you. Very well. Well, that was George Riafe bringing us up to speed with the appointment of a new first deputy governor of the Central Bank. Now, moving on, the impact of mobile technology on financial services is a topic for the upcoming Joy Technology and Innovation Summit, JOTIS 2017. The third edition of JOTIS will take place at the Kofi Annan ICT Center at Rich here in Accra on Tuesday, August 15, 2017 at 9.30 a.m. This program is being organized by Joy FM Thought Leadership with support from Joy Business. Over the next few weeks and ahead of the event, Joy Business will bring you some facts and figures in a special Did You Know? Okay, this will be a, a segment that will be regular on the marketplace. And let's catch a glimpse of some of the things we expect to see. Did you know Ghana has more mobile phones than people with an estimated 36.5 million mobile phone subscribers for a total population of around 27 million? All right, it's now time for to take an investment tip. Investment Tips is brought to you by Daffing Finance, Deposits, Investments, Borrowings and Advisory.
Investment Advisory Do you have an investment advisor? How often do you check up your financial health? It is recommended you do a checkup at least once a year. Can you trust the advisor? This is about the competency of the advisor. Do ask if licensed and regulated to offer the services, investment philosophy or management style of the advisor. Any investment policy created at inception and reviews, returns promises and risk education. Track record in the past, simply know your advisor. Investment Tips was brought to you by Dauphin Finance, Deposits, Investments, Borrowings and Advisory. And that will be it for the marketplace for today. Many thanks for joining us and do join us again same time tomorrow. But for now, let's cross over to Parliament where the Ameri Par deal is being debated in Parliament and we want to bring you some live uh, pictures from Parliament. Mr. Speaker asked me specifically to restrict myself to the motion and after it has been seconded, Mr. Speaker will proceed to make some observations. Mr. Speaker, I took it to mean that after you have made those pronouncements, that was your ruling and that the matter will be taken from there. Mr. Speaker, the Honourable Colleague gets up and effectively anticipating the point that I was going to make in my motion, which I have not been allowed Mr. Speaker, to proceed with. I find that scandalous and a complete breach of all the rules of this house, Mr. Speaker. I think it's completely out of order and he must so be cautioned, Mr. Speaker. Honorable uh, uh, members, all matters of law, all matters of privity of contract, all information that should be conveyed to this house, whether by uh, to the committee, whether by the president, the executive, or any other person, is best determined by a committee of this honorable house. Yeah. Parliaments don't determine such matters at plenary without committee hearings to analyze the matter one way or the other. The entire committee result will appear before this honorable house. Then if anybody will propound the law, home and abroad, privity of contract or otherwise, there will be plenty of time to do so for this honorable house to take a decision. That ends this matter for now. It's referred to the committee. It will determine and report for this house to debate the matter. Honorable members, all that paper addendum. Item listed as one, motion, order, chairman of the committee, chairman of the committee. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.
Report Addendum 1. Motion Chairman of the Committee. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. Order. Honorable Members, order. Mr. Speaker, I move. I move that this Honorable House adopts the report of the Finance Committee on the Annual Debt Management Report for the year 2016. Report. Mr. Speaker, the Annual Debt Management Report for the 2016 fiscal year was laid in the House on 2nd March 2017. sections of it. So, Speaker, the annual debt management report for the 2016 fiscal year was laid in the House on 2nd March 2017 okay? by the Minister for Finance. This followed the presentation of the budget government for the 2017 financial year. So, Speaker, this debt management report aims at providing Parliament with details of the debt dynamics in 2016. Pursuant to Section 72 of Act 921, the report is required to include, among others, government borrowings and debt management operations, guarantee and lending activities of government, 